Greetings, everyone. I am Jerome Scott Smith, and today is our very first episode of Theater Talk. And I'm so excited. Today, we're going to talk about August Wilson. So let's get to it. Hello, I'm Jerome Scott Smith, and welcome to Theater Talk. Here at Theater Talk, we talk theater. There are so many things when it comes to the world of theater, and every week we dive into something new. For our first episode, our topic of choice is August Wilson. August Wilson was an award-winning American playwright whose work shows the joys and struggles of the African-American experience in the United States of America during the 20th century. But before we do that, I have some partners in crime that I'd like to introduce you to. Um, and so I want to start by introducing them and let them tell you a little bit about who they are. So let, uh, let's get it started. Chantel. Hello. Ladies first, I am Chantel Donneville, and I am one of the actors here in Richmond, Virginia. And I um, am one of the actors that sing and I dance. And uh, I absolutely, I love to perform. Um, I actually uh, love to do um, all types of um, theater. So um, I, I love to be on the stage. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely not afraid to do um, all different types of uh, theater. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'm not partial to any um, one type of theater. I actually like doing a, a fantasy even type of, uh, of theatrical theater. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm off, you know, very excited to, um, to do theater. I'm also very excited to uh, to do even um, you know film and things like that. But you know, theater is you know was my first love. You know, expression on a, on in you know on stage. You know, so absolutely. You know, that's what I love love to do. So uh, Tony, boom, you got it. All right, thank you, Chantel. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was a baton involved. <laughs> that's right. You next, uh, Tony. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daron, you want me to go ahead and get started? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, That's a hard act to follow right there. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Tony Cobb, and I'm a native of Richmond, Virginia. Um, came into acting later in life, didn't study or anything in school. I was actually about early 30s when I started, but I have been a professional actor for almost 30 years now. Been very blessed. I've worked um, pretty much every corner in this city. Uh, with a special kinship with uh, Jerome, our host, and J. Ron as well, and I've had the pleasure of working with Chantel before. Uh, and um, I like doing all kinds of theater, but for me, particularly at this point of my life or my career, however you want to term it, I'm, I'm definitely more meaningful, more uh, more of a pick and choose type of thing, you know, because I spent like the first maybe 15, 20 years, is pretty much trying to stay busy. You know, whether it's community theater, church-based plays, professional theater, the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, I feel like I'm at the point where I can pick and choose a little bit more, involve myself in projects that are more meaningful in my mind. And I'm at this point in my career, to be honest with you guys, is where I see myself pulling away a little bit more from the performing and doing more impresario type of things, behind the scenes type of things. Mm, I've had the uh, I've had the good fortune to direct. Jerome gave yeah. you like my first directing shot. <laughs> and I've had uh, opportunities since then with other theater companies. Yeah. And uh, I find that's my comfort zone right now to kind of elevate and to put others out there and help them mm -hmm. achieve their dreams and everything. And I get more is more of a kick out of that at this point in my career than I do actually being on stage myself, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Like Chantel has expressed, I have uh, done some film and TV, but I'm like 95% 90, theater guy. 
on All the right. stage. Uh -huh. That's that's my heart and my home. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tony. All right, J. Ron. Uh, I'm J. Ron Fleming Jr. I have been uh, involved in theater since 1993, uh, and I'm just learning in this conversation that Tony and I had a similar beginning. I didn't realize that we were both just about the same age when we started. I didn't study mm -hmm. theater in school. Um, I was fortunate to fall into the hands of a legendary theater yeah. director and teacher, Ernie McClintock. Yeah. My beginning experience was uh, aligned with Mr. Smith here, although he uh, had done theater in high school and college. Um, and uh, for me, uh, theater was a cultural awakening. I, I don't think I really fully understood myself as a, a black man and the depth <clears throat> of the black experience in the United States of America until I became, uh, until I was involved in the arts. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, works of people like August Wilson and Richard Wesley, um, Lorraine Hansberry, uh, 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 the African Company, uh, Tony, what's the other guy who wrote the African Company? Oh, Carlisle Company? Brown. Carlisle yeah. Brown. Mm -hmm. Those types of writers uh, really awakened me to not only uh, the depth of the struggle of black folks, but the extraordinary strength and beauty to be able to survive. Uh, you know, what we are going through right now is, is just an amazing thing to see because uh, we, anybody who's uh, at least, you know, 30 years old or more has seen uh, the majority of time in America that we represented these uh, efforts alone. <laughs> and now to see such a broad based uh, mm -hmm. effort uh, in America uh, to try to create a more just society, um, theater has been able to speak toward that without being uh, so uh, in your face, mm -hmm. I guess is a way you can yeah, say it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm, I feel privileged to do the work. So I, as a matter of fact, I was just in a production of Fences just this past February. Mm -hmm. And we were fortunate to close right before the yeah. entire entity was shut down. And so uh, that's uh, that's how I came into it. And uh, uh, I look forward to any other opportunities. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, and, uh, and I am um, uh, Jerome Scott Smith. Um, wow. I um, You know, theater has been a part of my life for, uh, like uh, J. Ron said, high school is when I started. Um, and... Um, from there, I went to college, but I had all these questions when I was in college because I was the only uh, African American student in that program for so many years, and so I had all these questions, and um, a lot of those questions were answered well the day that I met uh, Ernie <laughs> McClintock, you know, and he was a part so uh, such a big part of what I became, uh, and opened the doors that were locked for me, um, you know, and so. Uh, it, that journey started there. I, for really, it started there because those doors were really closed. I, I had no idea who I was as a, a, a African American uh, artist, you know. And 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 now I know, <laughs> you know. So um, I want to just say that these you guys are my partners in crime on this journey. Um, <laughs> I call you guys my my uh not my uh, council of elders or my Jedi council. If you will, yes, I like the Jedi. Uh, Jedi <laughs> Council. There we go. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's not, I just that's got right. Disney Plus. So I went back. Yeah. And watched oh, oh, oh yeah. Don't tell say leave the elders out of this title. There's some good things in there. <laughs> 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 but um, you guys are gonna, we're gonna, uh, as we're going on this journey um, of uh, theater talk, you know, um, I'm, I'm a pull you guys on, and there's so many more in our community that you all know, you know, who are not here right now. And they'll be here at some some episode for sure for sure. Um, um, I mean, we have we have a whole list of people who have a lot of knowledge, um, done a lot of things, um, and they're gonna be they can be very useful to our conversations of uh, theater. All right. So all right, let's get started with our 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 questions. Um, um, we're talking about August Wilson. Um, mm. And the question that I'm going to pose to all of you, I have two questions. I'm going to uh, dive into these one at a time, okay? Um, and we can keep, keep the same order or whoever has a burning desire to go first, that's fine. Um, 
The first question I have is, uh, how has uh, the work of August Wilson affected you as an artist? Mm. Let's I, do that I first. Absolutely, would love to go first. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Chantel, why don't you go first? <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. I remember when I was in uh, VCU, mm. and here I am in, in a sea of, I would like to say Caucasian faces. And we finally get to uh, the page where we get an August Wilson filet in a sea of plays yeah. that were white plays. And finally, I didn't have to be a slave. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> Like, oh my goodness, I want to be, I don't care who I want to be. Like, I can finally, like, play a part. I Like, I didn't care. Like, I was like, oh my goodness, I want to be the sister. I want to be the mother. Like, I don't care. Just give me a part. Mm. I can sing more than a line. Like, I, I was so excited. Mm. Uh, man, I, like, they couldn't believe I could act. Mm. I could speak. It was so wonderful. And finally, I had a voice. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what it felt like. Mm -hmm. Here I am in the 19, you know, 1990, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> and that's how I feel. So imagine what it felt like for them on stage. Mm acting and performing as professionals mm. with an August Wilson play and you're finally being honored as an actor and you don't have to play the slave finally. You don't have to be the background mm. in a play finally. You, mm. get to, you get to actually actually reflect life as a human being, yeah. just as a human. Yeah, very yeah. true. I have my own issues and my own needs. Mm -hmm. I have my own legacy. Yeah. I am a human being. That's it. But once we had a voice, that's what it felt like in this class. Mm. For once, I had a voice. Mm. Who was your teacher uh, that uh, opened that up for you guys? Oh man, I, I couldn't even remember. Um, I couldn't remember if it was, if Hopper was our teacher at the time or <clears throat> or if it was like a grad student. I want to say it was Hopper, but it could have been a grad student at the mm -hmm. time. I don't even remember. All I can remember is the, the page. Yeah. Mm. I can uh, remember just opening the book and the page. Yeah. I said, finally. Mm. I get a chance to have a part. Yeah. No other time could I actually have a part and actually feel as though I had a role. Do you know, at the whole time that I was at VCU, I didn't have, I mean, or even in, at, at, at my, in college, I didn't get an opportunity to audition for roles because, or, 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 or have an audition to, have a, a a a role where I felt as though it that it was my that it was outside of my race type of situation. Yeah, yeah. Only because of the the fact that I always had to compete with. Mm, sorry, this is more realistic, and 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 you, that you can't fit this role because this this is realistic, mm -hmm. sweetheart. The only thing that you can get is is the mama. So I played a lot of old ladies. I was, I was 18 and 19 and I played a lot of old ladies. Mm. I played a lot of slave roles or I played, you know, the hooker. So those are the roles that I got. Yeah. So yes, I loved for once having a voice. All right. Thank you, Chantel, for uh, that. Uh, okay, anybody ne next? <clears throat> Okay, I'll go next. Um, yeah. um, I want to piggyback uh, something that J. Ron said in his introduction, which I think is very profound. Um, you guys, you know, because of my age, you guys know I'm 
got some years on you guys. And I grew up in the 60s. And, mm. and so therefore, you know, I knew a lot about, you know, the black experience. You yeah. know, I sold Black Panther newspapers as a 12 year old wow. kid and things like that. But it was still very a kind lot. of, <laughs> it was a goal. It was something else. It, it, it was more, it, it wasn't organic. So when I got involved in theater and start and was exposed to August Wilson's, Wilson's stories and scripts, mm-hmm. It was almost like I was learning the basic black experience. You know, you know, I grew up, you know, working class kind of thing. You know, um, did well in school and really blase, blase, that kind of thing. Grew up in a black neighborhood, so I was surrounded with blackness, and yeah. positive blackness. But with the uh, August Wilson plays, do they? They talk about everything: the highs, the lows, the peaks, the valleys, the good, the bad, the profundity of it. So it helped, you know, I was like, wow, I thought I knew something about being black. Mm -hmm. But more specifically as an actor, what I've, um, what August Wilson's work has, uh, the way it's affected me is, um, it taught me script analysis. You know, for the first thing, I could could really look at a script, really dig into a script and then just, just, you know, get into, okay, this is where he's trying to go. And more important language how to yeah. take care of the language. There you go, yeah. Um, monologues I had done, you know, before, throughout, even early in my career, you know, because like I said, I was really, and Jerome, you remember my first play? Remember we did a Soldier's Play at Virginia Union? Uh, yeah, yeah. I remember, for that yeah. Guy. I remember that. Peterson. Yeah. So um, I had read many scripts, I had read monologues, had done monologues, but I had never truly read or done a monologue until I did an August Wilson. Mm. You know, just the whole storytelling. Uh, and as I said before, this uh, taking care of the language. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I had I had have a couple of scripts within my fingertips, but I don't want to get off the Zoom. <laughs> but just the way he just say something really, just very succinct and very simply. Yeah. It's organic, it's real, it has message to it. But it's this, so for me, it's affected me as an actor to learn how to take care of the language and to also um, analyze that script. You know, because even though he's talking about everyday kind of situations, you know, August Wilson's plays or stories could almost be, in a sense, like a sitcom. It's a situation. Mm-hmm. It's a boarding house. It's guys getting off of work and um, uh, being upset about his, you know, not being able to play in the major leagues and holding his son back. It's, it's all these kind of just stories and stuff or of the human condition, I should say. But it's just woven and told so masterfully mm-hmm. that you just feel like. And mm-hmm. I want to say this: I saw J. Ron uh, recently in a production of Fences. I had done Fences, I had read Fences, but I experienced Fences mm-hmm. watching that production. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it just felt so real and you know like this whole thing you know I was mm. there kind of thing and uh, mm. he does that he does that his writing mm. is it almost has a simplistic genius to it mm-hmm. you know because when he he'll, when he just says certain mm. lines or just piece certain lines that boy ain't got good sense I remember my, my character Seth you know said that like 10 different times in Joe Turner's oh, comeback that. that boy ain't got no sense yeah, yeah, you know, but it was almost like the, when it was tied into the line that followed or the lines that preceded it, it was just pitch perfect. Yeah. A simple line like that boy ain't got no sense. That boy ain't got good sense. Stuff like that. Stuff. Yeah. I just lo- I just love the language, and that's yeah. how it affected me as an actor. It taught me how to take care of the language. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. Um, I I have a similar thing, but I I I I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let uh, Javon um go ahead um. By chime in, uh, you, uh, J. Ron, you got anything? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, just listening to each other, man. Uh, the bottom line of it is, is it's our experience. You know, even in in uh, though we are now at a moment of uh, awakening, it seems that you know we have a generation. My son is now twenty years old, and wow, you know, he's grown up in his lifetime, and for most of his uh, formative years. The president of the United States was a a, a black man, and and we no longer have to apologize for being who we are. And and Wilson's work is true. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to apologize or or explain. We it is what it is. 
and now we these types of pieces of art because I can you know some of those interviews uh, that you can watch on YouTube of uh, August Wilson being interviewed by Charlie Rose in particular uh, mm-hmm. talking about the battles that he used to fight um, it, it's now clear uh, the effects of what has transpired in the American experience that was oppressive to, to black life and uh, August was brave and bold enough to put it in art and so uh, it made people uncomfortable, even bl- a lot of black folks. I can yeah. remember one of the early works that we did uh, with Ernie, it was an August Wilson piece. <laughs> I believe it was Do Your Lord Remember Me. And I remember after the show, a, a black woman in the audience said, why do you gotta keep talking about all that old slavery stuff? Mm. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. But, but a lot of, yeah. it, I mean, this is the damage yeah. that that we're the art helps to 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 rectify it, so it's not sh- sugar coated, but it also it shows a lot of love, a lot of beauty, a lot of success, even yeah. in you know uh, the struggles that 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 we've been through. And yeah. so uh, you know, it, 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 <laughs> I think he was the first black man to win a Pulitzer Prize. Is that correct? Is yeah, that, yeah, playwright, yeah, black male play, play, playwright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, Playwright. Uh, well, black male yeah. didn't uh, male. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Rain Hansberry. Yeah, Rain yeah. Hansberry. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, we still, even after all of this, we still always talk about the first black this and the first like that. But the, for me, the most significant aspect of his work it is truth. I can remember my yeah. uncle yeah. to talk to like that. I can remember, you know, boy, get your ass in here. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. it, it speaks in, in, in black language, yeah. which is a beautiful thing. And uh, we, we, we now realize that uh, the reason that black people, Africans in the diaspora were so attacked is because of our brilliance. Yeah. And all this shows that in his brain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, touche. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I want to say um, thank you all so much. That's, that's really good. Um, what I was thinking was um, um Y'all have a great, great point. Um, the language for me is a thing, you know, um, because as a, when I when I was in school all those years, I was you know I knew who um, you know um, Neil Simon was. You know, I knew who mm. David Mamet was. You know, and that they have a, a certain cadence to their language as well. You know, um, yeah. and that's kind of very theatrical. You know, it's uh, something that you see, you hear, and you you can all, always you can always almost even copy it right um but when i the language of august wilson was something it sounded so different than those oh. <laughs> of, of american playwrights it was so different it was a voice that is there it's always been there but who has captured it like that I you know, know in, in such a way that it's so it's poetic it's it's you know yes. and and it, it's something you, you, you can you, you you know you can have your children uh, learn from and listen to, you know, because it, it is, if you if you never live in a black neighborhood, this will get you there, this gets you there mm. as well, you know? Yeah. And, you know, um, and I don't know, I mean, when I say, when I say things like uh, you've never lived in a black neighborhood, I, uh, I you know, I, I lived in the suburbs of, 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 of Richmond, not even Richmond, and <laughs> Chesterfield, um, and, and you know, and so those things it sounded different. The, the, the you know the words were different in, in those neighborhoods, you know. But what I remember though is my uncles and my grandmother and grandfather and my grown when I grew up in New Jersey, how that sounded, and I could connect all the way back, you know. So there's a through through uh, through line for me, you know with his his language it's such a real thing it's so tangible it's relatable you know um to i think to to every black uh family in some way or another you know mm-hmm. it, it's there so i could really and that affected me um because it kind of knocked the, the doors wide open so you know, as a you know, because I do write plays, you know, and I do direct, you know, yes. some things really opened the doors for me to say, yeah, I can use my what my grandmother and my uncles and the, that language is so rich, and y'all know it, you know, you hear it, and you know, you go to a, a family reunion and it's there, you know, 
And it's like, and, and August Wilson, like he just sat and list, listened, you know, and, and just put it out there in, in such a way that we all understand, you know, and we mm-hmm. get. Um, I remember as a teacher, um, I had students when we were, they would write and, or we would read things and they said the word ink and all that stuff. And, and, and they would say, well, that, that's not right. Ink. That's not correct English. I said, no, it's not. But isn't that how you talk it, it, when you are with, without, without a teacher? That's how you, and that how you talk in the streets. That's that, you know, and so that language is a real thing, you know, and I wanted them to connect to that, you know. And so this August Wilson just kind of connected all those dots, you know, mm-hmm. for me as a, as a black artist to make me say, yep, I can do this. It, it, there's no apologies. I don't have to be Mamet. I don't have to be Neil Simon. I don't have to, you know, I, I can do me, you know, and that's what that was. And that was a, a beautiful and uh, uh, liter- liberating thing for me. You know? Yeah, no doubt. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank y'all. All right. Yeah. So that's that's question one number one. All right. <laughs> and that was a rich uh, dialogue. Thank y'all so much for what you, what y'all had to say on that. All right. The last one. Um. Um. And I think a fun one for me. Um. Because I want to hear everybody's uh, answer. <laughs> what August Wilson play or production has affected you the most? Um. It could be. I was studying. Uh, for- I was studying for this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. yeah, It could be uh, something you read. It could be as an audience member, as a director, as an actor, uh, w- you know, whatever. How has, uh, <laughs> what play, uh, what play has really spoken to you? Go ahead and let Chantel say something. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, <laughs> ladies first. Wait, J-Ron is leaning forward. <laughs> J-Ron is leaning bit. forward. I, I want to go first, but go J-Ron ahead. is leaning. <laughs> oh, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll go first. Tony, right, want to go, go first? Ahead, yeah, go I'll go first. But what if Tony says mine? You know what, Tony? I'm going <laughs> to it's so I'm gonna let you go. go ahead, you gonna let me go? You gonna let me go, Chantel? I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> I appreciate that. Say mine. I think you're not gonna say mine. It's done well, a Mine's a little specific. Jerome, I do have two. So I'm okay, okay. Whoa, well, no, no talk. <laughs> That's not fair. It's no, very specific. Though. Any, hey, Tony, let her know. go, man. We'll never hit the end of it. I know. Okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Chantel. Tony, go, go, any, any, mine, your mo, Tony. Okay. <laughs> well, the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, at Theater Virginia, I think Benny Ambush directed a production of The Piano Lesson. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the 90s. Right. Now, I had already done one August Wilson play. I had done Joe Turner's Come and Gone, as we oh. say, yeah, at right. Virginia Union. Okay. But, you know, it was a play, and I was like, wow, this is a bad play, and I did it. I went to see this particular production of A Piano Lesson that Benny did at Theater Virginia. And not so much that the performances themselves were very memorable, but that particular production got me interested in the cycle. Ah. Because I I was like, yo, okay, this is some kind of deep. I had heard of August, even before I started acting, I knew he wanted to post for uh, Fences. Yeah. You know, I knew Fences was a big Broadway hit, James Earl Jones. And I knew who he was and I knew his work, but I didn't know his work. Yeah. And the, um, that particular production got me interested in the cycle. And mm. from that point forward, I'm connecting dots. You know, King Heli II is really the uh, sequel to Seven Guitars. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Raymond, um, and the, the guy in Radio Golf is the grand, uh, Raymond Wilkes is the grandson of Caesar Wilkes, who's in Jimmy mm. the Ocean, and mm. he was in, in the landlords, but therefore mm. Raymond became a real estate mogul. Connecting all those kind of dots. Yeah, yeah. So that got me interested in the cycle. Mm. But you know, this is a softball, Jerome. <laughs> production, the August Wilson production that has meant the most to me yes. was in 2006 when mm. Jerome Scott Smith had the genius <laughs> to hire Carl Gordon and he married <laughs> Carl Gordon with AART's ensemble. Oh, yeah. Did Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Yeah. And to me, you, you mm. did genius work on that, brother. I mean, yeah. the cast you put together, just mm. the way you ran the show, the way you allowed Carl to kind of uh, father us yeah. in the play, 
And he did it so willingly and so lovingly. Yeah, yeah. But you, you were the man. You were in charge. You had to, well, now we were at rehearsal. And I'm watching Carl Gordon, who's, you know, been nominated for Emmys and so <laughs> probably. The Rome is like giving this brother notes. <laughs> Even though he used to do them separately, that was kind of slick. He used to do them but when Jerome would give a direction, you know, Carl was like, mm -hmm. "Yo, okay, all right, got you, got you, got you, Jerome," kind of thing. And I just saw the the respect you commanded from him, you know, because you had our love and respect because we knew you. Yeah. But just the respect and the love you commanded from him just impressed me. And then we got on stage with the exception of that one character I don't want to get into. <laughs> but we got on stage, oh, we yeah. were humming like a train. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah. rolling. To this day, that, you know, everybody in that cast, we talk about that show wow. constantly. Yeah. Constantly. But so those two productions of August Wilson piece, one that I saw. Yeah. One that I had the uh, luxury and the pleasure and the blessing to be in. Yeah. Those two productions did it for me. Wow. And then, you know, that time um, when I just getting him on board, I mean, that was, I had to take a, a, a real risk. I was scared. I was like, to even. You were too. And get him to, you know, and then yeah. to, uh, I, I think that's the first time that I really felt like, okay, oh, yeah, I, I got this because it was hard to, yeah, he, you're right. He, he, he on, on stage and his, his, his stature as and theatrically, you know, mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, all right, can I do this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I had to like ease my way into that. But I, he, he made me feel very, very comfortable. And you know him being the 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 professional that he was, you know, gave me that confidence to, as a as a director to do to be a director, you know, and not yeah. But you know, some people like I, you know, I'm I'm the you know, and but he, he was very gracious in that that regard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So who's next? <laughs> all right, Sartell. <laughs> I didn't pick one of yours, did I? See. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them told <laughs> Well, he didn't pick okay. the two, so I guess you ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> he did, he did. He slicked, he was being slick. He was oh. trying to pick two of them. Oh, no. I saw you, Tony. <laughs> uh, so mine was piano lesson. Oh, yeah. As a favorite, let me tell you why. <laughs> piano lesson, you can do so much with it. It's... You, it has so much symbolism. Yeah, so much symbolism mm. in it. Mm -hmm. First of all, you can have. It, it, it comes from being, you know, talking about the the African um, heritage in there, and then it talks about mm. ghostly things in it. You know, uh, it, you know, it it has uh, sound features in it. You know, you can you can be. A director that can be, you know, crazy and 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 throw all types of surprises and sounds in there, or you can be one of those type of, you know, uh, directors that, um, you know, really, um, really make everything be have lots and lots of questions in it, you know, um, because it has so much symbolism in it. It it questions what is legacy. Mm. What is the real path of legacy? Because it, it goes back to saying, like, it, it, it questions, like, you know, you, you have that African uh, legacy of the, the piano. And then you talk about, well, what about that legacy of making it? Taking the piano and making mm. something better for yourself. Yeah. Pushing beyond. And we still struggle with that. Yeah. You know, we still struggle with, well, oh, wait a minute, hold up. You know what I'm saying? Do we go back and we mend ourselves, our, mend our families? Or do we mm -hmm. say, you know what, son or daughter, you good. You take care of yourself while mom work herself to death so I can make it, make us, make, make it better for ourselves. But was it worth it? Was that legacy worth it? Which legacy are you ruining now? So it's, it's this legacy that we are fighting for. Are we ruining the real legacy? Mm. So it's a really deep concept and we still fight for it. Yeah. And, and once again, you bring up that S word, slavery. Mm. And you got that lady in the, in the, in the, in the crowd saying, 
Why they gotta bring up that that slavery word? Why you gotta bring up slavery? Because it is about that. Look at all the things that have been taken back or taken away from us. Do we ever go back and get it? Mm. Do we ever go back? All right. Well, well. Thank you, Chantel. Very good point. Um, legacy. All right, J-Ron? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think anything was ever taken away from us. I think uh, we were uh, hoodwinked, bamboo. <laughs> we were always brilliant. <laughs> yes. And I think that, that, that canvas <laughs> that they laid over our face, uh, <laughs> August helps to pull back through showing us the beauty in ourselves. But for me, um, the most uh, impactive, uh, I love them all. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that he was courageous enough to take an entire century and try to put as much black life and uh, periodic context in each one of, a, uh, of, of 10 decades is just an extraordinary gift. Yeah. But trains running for me, mm. not so much because of August, not only, but, let, let, let me rephrase that, not only because of August, but because of the production I saw. Uh, I saw a production and it was the first time, Ernie used to always talk about excellence. And I never really understood that what that was until I saw a production of Two Trains Running at Center Stage in Baltimore. And it had a group of extraordinary actors. Um, the only two that I can call by name right now is the man who played Memphis, Anthony Chisholm, who's a noted mm -hmm. actor. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, the guy who played Sterling, uh, which I have also played in one of your productions. Yeah. Keith Glover, who's a noted playwright. And yeah. in that production, I can still vividly remember some aspects of movement, of tonality, mm. of owning of the space. Yeah. Mm. And I remember after that show, Mary Hodges was standing over the side and she was crying. And I remember at that moment, because I remember I felt a certain energy in my body. There was this buzz in the crowd. You know, a lot of mm. people didn't leave the theater. It was just an excitement. And, and, uh, and I was like, that's excellence. Yeah. Yeah. People that rendered that kind of performances that you would remember them years later. The guy, and I, I, I'm not able to call his name. Perhaps, you know, maybe that's even something I should, I'm sure I, I used to always keep my playbills, but it would be the guy who played, uh, is it Wes, the funeral? The oh, other yeah, yeah, yeah. West, yeah. 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 West, okay. Yeah. I can still remember him sitting in the middle of the stage. Yeah. And the way he drank his coffee. Yeah. yeah. And so to me, that's our main responsibility as actors. It's not so much, you know, we're blessed when we got these brilliant words by a brilliant playwright. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But that's, that's there. Our responsibility is to take those words and bring them to life. Yeah. And that's what that production did. And so I'm, I always have an affinity for two trains running out. Those, those types of performances that you remember years later, that, that type of, uh, of detail work in the character is what, that's what we better do. Yeah. 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 I mean, because you know, some stuff is so well written. Uh, we could come out and put up a table. And say, <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, and you're right. Good. And people yeah. would like it because yeah. it's well written. Yeah. That's why when you have something like, uh, um, you know, I was in a wonderful production, even though this is a musical, but still, uh, I was in a wonderful production of uh, uh, Color Purple some years ago. And we had an mm. extraordinary woman playing Sealy. So we had an excellent quarterback. It was a Pulitzer mm. Prize winning play they came out of, a, of an award-winning movie from an award-winning writer with mm. people like Quincy Jones doing the music. I mean, yeah. it had all the elements. So we yeah. could have come out and read it and people yeah. would have it. So right. <laughs> that production, let me circle back to my original point, of, showed me the work that we need to do as actors. Yeah. That's okay. where the responsibility lies. Yeah. In okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, remember, I remember that show. I was there yeah. with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, 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 J. Ron. Did you that, Tony? Oh um, no, no! I thought you were talking about Color Purple. My oh, bad. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about that, that, that production of um, Two Trains. Yeah, I saw Color yeah. Purple and um, and um, Baltimore, which was, yeah. Uh, you know, there's these these uh, transformative uh, performances. These shows you see, but for me, this happened. Um, it wasn't on stage. Um, 
when I was with that that's actors, we would always go to Ernie's house and he would always find us these nuggets. Either what, what whether it was a show or uh, somebody he bought bought in. Well, one night, and I'm trying to tell him, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm have to get take yours too. <laughs> but one night we were watching um, the piano lesson. Uh huh. It was my first time ever seeing his work in action. Um, it was the the uh, Hallmark um, had the show. At, you know, I don't know if y'all seen that. It's a TV. Version of, 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 I uh, have, yeah, yeah, I have. The piano What's lesson. Huh? What's the name of it? Uh, the piano, uh, the piano lesson. Oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and you, are, I think you are there, J. Ron. We all, we all watched this production, this, uh, this, uh, at, at Ernie's house. Okay. And I will never forget. And and see, I, I I've been under the, I've directed August Wilson. I've been in shows, but this to me just opened this door for me. I, I, I remember sitting there watching this and I was just in awe, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, it, it's, it kind of came full circle, you know? For me, you remember I said that I, um, when I was in, 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 co in college, I was the only one looking for, I was always on this journey. And then I found Ernie and we started doing these things, right? But then when I saw this thing mm -hmm. that he showed us, it it all came. It's like okay, this is what, this how we do it. This is what I do, but this how you do it for real. And I saw mm -hmm. that, and this was before we saw that produc production production uh, in Baltimore. It just kind of it came full circle. The language, how it. You talking about the one with Charles? Yes, and and, yeah. and, and Carl was in it. Carl, Carl was in <laughs> yeah. that too. Yes. Yeah. And I the, the the scene that I that that got me the most. Out of all the all the August Wilson, is that scene when all when they're at the table, and they're remembering the um parchment farm. farm, farm. Oh yeah. Uh, Berta, 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 Berta. And I'm I'm telling you, it was something that it just hit my soul. You know what I mean? Yeah, I knew you always had an affinity. For yeah. Yeah, for that. The way it was filmed, the way it was, the the sounds, and you know, it was all those things that came together was something yeah. that you can't get anywhere else. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe the Irish can do it in a in a jig, you know, and yeah. maybe the, you know, the the uh, the uh uh ja Japanese can do it in their thing, but this was our thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was so black. <laughs> Not African, but our thing right here in this country. Yeah, it was so Everything. black. Yeah, yeah, because you know all the things that that made us who we are. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that moment, it was just all right there. The the, drum, the drumming, the cadence. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It was, yeah, it was just yeah. beautiful, beauty, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it just hit me in such a way that I think at that moment, I became the artist that I needed, I know I needed to be. Yes. All right. You know what I mean? I had all the tools, finally, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and from that moment on, I think, it it was on, you know. Mm. Yeah, and so yeah. that was kind of like what Chantel was alluding to yeah. about how like the that, sound like, yeah, piano yeah. lesson does that stand. Up. Of course, like, naturally, our rainy's black bottom features yeah. music. Yeah, the yeah. guitars features music. Yeah. yeah, but that sound which you just described. Yeah. It's very unique, similar to the Juba scene yeah. and Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Oh, but yeah. that bird of the scene is on a different level. I know exactly. It's on, yeah. Yeah. I, I I will never forget that. Um, and you know, there hasn't been a whole lot of things that touched me the way that that has. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that that you know, but that that when I hit that at that point in my life, and I saw that, it's just like it's our culture, and it's not fed to us through a filter of whiteness, which yes. is you know, yeah. Probably Lorraine Hansberry was the first uh, most accomplished playwright to, to put something with that much substance in it. But even that was a lot of having to deal with the white man in that story. Yeah, yeah, right, right. August Wilson's work, they ain't even there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but, but even throughout the entire play, like even in the, um, even in the directions, the actual piano legs are supposed mm. to have 
Mm. They're supposed to be carved. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. African, like, almost like totem poles, like yeah. the like Native American totem. Yeah. They're supposed to be African carved. Like, these af- actual piano legs yeah. are supposed to look like they are ancient. Mm. Like, they are a piece of ancient heritage. Like, yeah. Like this was not bought out of Pee Wee's right, next door right. neighbor's garage sale, honey. This is like the the uh, priceless Giza, Giza. Like yeah, yeah. This was made out of something that was came straight out of Africa. Like this is something that is absolutely priceless. Like yeah. I mean, it reminds you of like a, a, a um, you know the you know the walking canes that you get. When they are handmade, coming yeah, out of yeah, 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 you know the difference from yeah. the ones that you buy, you know, down at the at the market. You know yeah. the difference from a one that you buy and you got it from Africa. Man, it don't even feel this. It doesn't even feel the same. Right, exactly. You know, the wood doesn't even feel the same. Yeah. Imagine the weight on that piano, you know, yeah. or the way the the piano L- literally looks. and figuratively. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Get it, Tony. Yeah. Tony, Tony, you know. Yeah. But, the, but you know what I'm saying? The, the what awesome. you can do, you know, Jaron. Stop it. <laughs> stop it, Jaron. Yeah. You, where's that? You where's that line? From? You can play with that throughout the whole thing. And if you are like really into the whole artistic thing, like you could play with the art and the sound and the lights through the whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not just that one scene. Mm. Oh, you like the ghost scenes, you mean? That's what I'm saying. Through the whole ghost, scene, yeah. Because yeah. remember, you know, she sees the ghost. But how many other times does it trick? Mm. And how many other people does it trick? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? How many times mm. is it pick a boo? Mm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You can really see J. Ryan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, theater talk is something that uh, you know we, we can all be a part of and witness. Um, it's some good talk here. Um, thank you, my my friends today, because it was some good talk. Uh, yeah. Anytime. Thank you. We love you, man. Jerome, yeah. we love you, man. Hey, you. Was the man. <laughs> my idol. Woo, my idol. Oh man, no, thank you, thank you. <laughs>